There are difficult days but, we're still here, toddler born with just 20% of his brain defies doctors who advised his mom to get an abortion. Jackson Buell was born with just 20% of his brain and most of his skull missing. He was blue and black and the umbilical cord was wrapped around his neck. Doctors had no idea what had caused such a huge defect but warned his parents that he would survive for hours, maybe a few days at the most. Today. Jackson is two and a half years old and is stubbornly opposing his bleak prognosis. For a child who was never expected to walk, talk, hear or see, he is defying expectations and is learning to grab and hold things. He can even tell his parents, I love you. Jackson was diagnosed with a rare brain malformation called microhydranencephaly. Little is known about the malformation, except that most babies who are born with it only live a few days. Doctors still don't know what caused it in Jackson. His father Brandon told DailyMail.com there are difficult days. There are days that are very challenging. There are days that break our hearts to watch him go through a very difficult day, but what has encouraged us is truly watching him respond back to us and it's just truly amazing. The three of us together, there's been a lot of things for us to go through, but we're still here, we're still together, we're still experiencing joy with our son and I think that's the most important part. Doctors first realized something was wrong with Jackson's development just a few weeks into the pregnancy. The scans showed that Jackson's brain wasn't growing normally, so doctors recommended an abortion. They didn't think Jackson would survive. However, Brandon and Brittany refused to terminate because of their devout Christian faith and Jackson continues to outlive all the doctor's predictions today. The unfortunately reality for the young family from North Carolina is that Jackson may not live long. But their strong Christian faith helps them move forward every day and enjoy the time they have with their son. Brittany said, it won't be the last time I see him. When I see him again, He'll be in full form and he'll be 100% Jackson and be able to run up to me and give me a hug. So it doesn't really strike a nerve. Maybe every now and then I'll think too deeply into it and I'll get a little emotional, but we just treat him like a typical child. We give him everything that we can. We play with him like a typical baby and honestly, I don't think about it often because I've already mentally prepared myself for that. It'll happen and he's not really showing any signs of going anywhere anytime soon. So when the time comes, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. The Buells have shared Jackson's story on social media but as a result have found themselves the target of hateful comments and death threats. But with remarkable strength they brush off the threats and focus on what is important, supporting their son. Jackson has about eight different doctors and specialists. He goes to physical therapy once a week and occupational therapy every three months, but practices those therapies at home every day. He is learning to grab and hold things in his hand and because his brain is signaling for his muscles to contract, he has to be stretched frequently. Brittany, 28, stays home with Jackson every day, working him through his different therapies and keeping him on a consistent routine with his food, medicine, and day-to-day -day development. We have good days and we have bad days, she said. Some days he's just not in the mood. He's teething right now and that upsets him. Maybe one day we'll have a bad day, we'll just snuggle all day and watch the TV. But other days we try to keep him active and we try to treat him like a typically developing child. So it's really busy, but he enjoys every minute of it. Lately part of his routine is getting a bath on a regular basis because he's a little bit older now. He really lights up in the bathtub. I can barely get him washed before he's ready to go swimming, Brittany laughed. Of course I hold him because he can't swim on his own, but I only hold his head. He kind of floats there and he uses his little arms and legs to kick around in the water and he really enjoys it. Brittany rarely has the opportunity to leave the house while her husband is at work because abrupt noises that many of us take for granted can put him into a seizure. She explained, there's a lot of things that he has a hard time tolerating outside of the house like grocery shopping, 
loud noises, the slamming of the shopping cart. If I'm outside of the house and a motorcycle goes by, all of these abrupt noises will bring him into a seizure, so a lot of times I just don't leave the house. However, when we are here and if he is having a good day, we'll go around and walk around the neighborhood so it's not too difficult. But on the harder days, it's nice when Brandon, 31, gets home from his job at a local Christian radio station giving Brittany the chance to run errands and get out of the house while Brandon takes over. Brandon said, I'll come home from work and the first thing I'll do is I will put my bags down and I'll instantly go grab him, snuggle with him, talk to him about the day. And that's not just spending time with my son, that's also giving my wife a much needed and well-deserved break. That's just honestly part of our daily routine, part of our life. He's our only child, it's all that we know. It's normal for us. And we love every minute of it, even if it's completely exhausting, we still love it because he brings us so much joy. Jackson has always smiled a lot, but now that he's older, he says words like mama and Addy, for daddy. He even says I love you to his parents. Sometimes it's extremely clear, other times it's just syllables, Brandon said. He's showing us that he knows us. He communicating with us in his own way. Jackson is even starting to recognize his favorite toys. Recently Brittany put Jackson in front of his toys and he recognized his favorite, a hard plastic green turtle that lights up when the buttons on its shell are pressed. He actually grinned and gave it a hug, Brittany said. He grinned so big and gave it a huge hug and was pressing the buttons immediately. Jackson is also improving his arm movements, reaching and grabbing for things. Brandon said, with everything he's up against and with the brain he's actually missing, the fact that he's able to do those things just blows us away. Brittany added, he definitely surprises us by the minute. It took doctors a year and six incorrect diagnoses before they finally determined Jackson had microhydrain encephaly. Though microhydrain encephaly can sometimes be inherited by a recessive gene, but there is no evidence that Jackson inherited it. During Brittany's pregnancy, she, Brandon and Jackson were all tested for it, but the results came back negative. They are currently waiting on another, deeper genetic test to see if there are any indicators for the disease that are harder to find, but those results will take much longer to come back. Doctors know very little about microhydrain encephaly and they are all still shocked he has lived this long. For the Buells that just means that every day is a gift. Brandon and Brittany know they will most likely outlive their son, but that doesn't make a difference to them, Brandon said. The longer we're blessed to be with Jackson, the longer we're blessed to have him and to hold him, the closer we get with him, the more that we love him and the more that bond is strengthened, that means that that moment will be that much harder to withstand, but we don't talk about that very often. In fact, we hardly discuss that because we already know it. No doctor has to retell us that. We know more than anybody else could ever imagine, the realization of our situation, but it does not change a thing. It does not change at all how we view our life, how we view our family, how we view our beliefs and how much we love Jackson because he deserves the best from us as his parents. And that's what we strive to do every single day no matter what. He added, if we were going to lose Jackson, then there was really nothing we could do anyway, so why not choose joy? Why not just choose to celebrate his life no matter how long we are blessed to have Jackson? Brandon and Brittany started the Jackson Strong Foundation in March last year as a way for Jackson's life to give back to others. We believe Jackson was created for a purpose, Brandon said. His life certainly has value and a purpose, so we built the foundation around that. The foundation raises funds and awareness for neurological research, advocacy for people with disabilities and pro-life organizations and in January the foundation donated to three organizations that each follow those areas of focus. In September, the Buells also had a book published called Don't Blink, to help celebrate Jackson's life and to share his story with more people. Brandon said, it gives background to Brittany and I, 
it gives background to the pregnancy and the diagnosis we first received and our decision and shortly after Jackson was born and to be honest with you, Jackson changes daily so the book is a great perspective on the beginning of our journey, but it certainly is not the end of our journey whatsoever. Along with the publicity, the Buells have also seen negativity, including hate mail and rumors about their family. They've even received some death threats, people saying they plan to go to the Buell's home in Florida, where they lived before North Carolina, to kill the family. But Brandon and Brittany aren't faced by the hatred. They laugh it off as much as they can and refuse to respond. Their hatred towards us has only caused us to have that much more conviction that we're doing the right thing, Brandon said. We must be doing something right if they hate everything we stand for and they want to try and stifle anything we're trying to do. But as a family of faith, we just delete, we block those people. We don't respond in kind. And honestly, we pray for them because all our family's trying to do is do something positive. I mean, that's why we wrote a book. That's why we started a foundation. The Buells believe that Jackson's story is about inspiration and encouragement to others, which is why they share his story so publicly. Honestly, we're just so proud of Jackson, Brandon said. He's our son and we love him like any parent should love their child regardless of any obstacle, any challenging disability. We're just proud of him. We're trying to do the best for him, give him the best that he deserves. And anyone that finds out about Jackson, his life, and his story, through the book, through the foundation, through any interview we do, through any speaking engagement I might do, it's about advocating for his life, and that his life can benefit the next person. Ultimately, we believe Jackson's life and story is about believing in life and believing in inspiration.